Okay. Well, everyone, if you don't know who this is, you are not on Instagram because he's, I'd say, one of the biggest superstars on Instagram. He goes under hashtag healthy vegan eating. And I was telling everyone, Javon, that I found you when we were having our kitchen renovated and we were staying in a, in a hotel and I was making food in Instant Pot and I found you and all of your amazing recipes. And we started making one of your sauces and dressings every single night. And we would have it with a pot of vegetables, frozen vegetables and beans and grain. And it was literally like having a gourmet meal every night. Your sauces are incredible. So I'm super excited to share you everything about you. I've seen, I saw your interview with Laurie Marbus of Mora okay. Medical recently. Right. That was a great interview. Sure, we are kind. Don't put it on ours though. Hang on, gotta mute somebody. Okay. Um, and uh, just super excited to hear your story and have you demonstrate your dish for us. So thank you so much for being with us tonight. I'll let you take over from here. Okay, well, um, give me some guidance. What part of my sure. story um, would you would you like to know? Okay, so know? I would like to know, first of all, when your journey started and how it started and what inspired you to start <clears throat> in the way that you ate and related to food. Yeah, well, I uh, always tell people, unfortunately, I started the way a lot of people started. Can you hear me well, by the way? Yes. Okay, good. Um, I started the way a lot of people started in that um, I had a health scare. I was um, I was eating the standard American diet uh, up until uh, maybe my early 30s, late 20s, and I got the results that a lot of people get. As you get older and you're less active, metabolism slows down, you start to put on weight. But to me, this was normal, no big deal. It's what everybody else is looking like at my age. It just happens to everyone. Um, but then I became pre-diabetic, pre-hypertensive, and um, I had some other issues and they were running some tests for some really serious stuff. I don't even say the name of it, I never do. Um, and so honestly, I was afraid. And that was a catalyst to make me say, okay, what do I do? And no one around me was eating any differently than I was. So. I had to go on the internet, I had to get some books, and I slowly started changing what I was eating, exercising more, and the results were, you know, um, were rapid, and they were positive, and so um, I've always been the type that when I get interested in something, I really immerse myself in it, and that's what I did, and, um, and I just learned a little bit here, a little bit here, became passionate about nutrition um, because of what it did for me, and, um, and so I wanted to make a career out of it. <clears throat> Um, and, and I, you know, it's been my passion ever since. So what, when you say you did your research, what things did you find first? Um, wow. You know, I was all over the place and, and, um, in hindsight, I'm glad I was because I think like so many people, um, when I said, okay, how do I improve my health? Well, as you know, if you go and Google healthy diet, healthy, you're going to get 10, 15 different diets, 10 different experts telling you why their diet plan is the best. So um, initially, believe it or not, uh, I was paleo. How about that? I, you know, I tried paleo. I tried Atkins. I tried low carb. I, I tried a lot of different things. What and happened? Really you, what happened when you, when you did paleo? What happened? Yeah, because as much as people have prescriptions, not everybody has them. Hang on, sorry. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, sorry. So, so what happened when I did paleo? Now, see, here's the confusing thing for a lot of people, Sharon, is that when I did paleo, I got good results. I got good results, but I got good results because of what I was doing before I did paleo, which was a standard American diet. And that is why I think a lot of people get misled, because if you're in a, a, a dire health situation, anything you change from the standard American diet is an improvement. And so you go, oh, this is it. Yeah, this is it. Low carb. This is it. Paleo. So for me, for a while, paleo was a thing. I was I, I, I took out a lot of processed stuff and ate. But 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 then I started doing more research and I realized the detrimental effects that, you know, over consuming meat can have on you. And um, and so I kept doing my research. And that's kind of been the thing that I've done. I never stop. Even now, I still read new studies. <laughs> I'm kind of weird. I, I read new health studies all the time. I'm always on PubMed. And so I'm always tweaking and turning. Sometimes it's a big change, but lately it's, they're just small adjustments. But to answer your question directly, I had positive results short term on paleo. 
And then I start reading some things, researching some things and said, wait a minute, long term, this is not going to this is not going to work. So how did you get into the plant based movement? Who was your inspiration there? Well, again, very organic, very progressive. Um, Dr. Mercola, you know, Mark Sisson, he's a paleo guy. Um, Dr. McDougall, R.D. Brenda David. I mean, you know, I've studied everybody, but the person that resonated with me the most, by far, was Dr. Furman. Yeah. Um, and so when I um, when I don't, I don't remember how I first. I think I came, you know, I'm on YouTube a lot looking for stuff and I, and I came across one of his videos and, and he was talking and, you know, truth resonates with me. And, and I could tell by his delivery and by his explanations, by his references, this guy knows what he's talking about. But the thing I like the most about him, and he states this, is that he doesn't seem to have an agenda. Listen, I love Dr. Gregor, nutritionfacts.org, Dr. Gregor, my second favorite next to Dr. Furman. Love him, love him, love him. But I can tell that he's looking, he's looking to substantiate why eating a plant-based diet is best. And I, there's nothing wrong with that. I commit it. Like I said, I love the guy. But Dr. Furman, to me, is the one person out there that doesn't seem to have an agenda other than helping people get healthy. And if it means he has to say, hey, look, studies show that when you ratchet your meat consumption down to 10%, you know, you can stave off disease and 5% or less, it's debatable whether that's better or a vegan diet is better. It's not the most popular thing to say, but he says it. So Dr. Furman resonated with me as, as the one person who seems the most objective, in my opinion, this is just my opinion. Um, and he's so knowledgeable, knowledgeable, it's ridiculous. And everything that he said that I did, I got the results he said I would. Um, so yeah, he, he's been my health hero above um, all others. I am so with you on that. Whenever people ask me who's your inspiration, I always say Dr. Furman. He's the first one. Hang that on a I second. Found. Let me turn this uh, volume down here. He's the first one that I found that inspired. And we changed our diet a long time ago. Um, you know, I kept getting healthier and healthier and healthier. And for me, it was a decades long journey. You know, I gave up red meat in my teens and poultry in my 20s and fish and seafood in my 30s and finally dairy in my 40s. Um, but it wasn't until I read Dr. Furman that I realized vegan is not enough, right? Like you can be a vegan, but eat a lot of processed food and not necessarily get the nutrients that you need. It wasn't until my husband went to the doctor because he was like everybody, he had pre-metabolic syndrome, high triglycerides, you know, et cetera. Um, and the doctor said, I'm going to need you put, to put you on a statin. And my husband said, I don't want to go on medication. And he said, well, then here, I want you to read this book. And he wrote on a prescription pad, Eat to Live by Joel Furman. Isn't that incredible? Mm. We had an integrated time. And my husband brings it home and hands me the prescription pad the paper. And of course, I went out and got the book, read the book, and immediately changed everything. Got rid of all the packaged food, all the boxed. We used to love box cereals. You know, we thought they were healthy, the healthy ones, whatever. I can't remember the name of it. Um, there's one brand that touts being so healthy and it was oh, Kashi at the time it was Kashi. So, oh, right. Yes. Yeah. So familiar. And they talk about being so healthy. They're not at all. And I realized this and I got rid of everything and um, it really radically changed the way we ate. And like you, I became voracious learning more and more and more from him. I completely immersed myself in all of his books. Anybody who hasn't read his books, read the latest one, which I think is called eat to live for life or eat for life. Really for life, yes. excellent, excellent summary of everything. He's got one. He's got um, one of my favorite books by him. And tell me if you like this one is um, oh my God, Super Immunity. It? That's my favorite. But the other mm -hmm. one that nobody else reads is the one. It's fast Food Genocide. Yes. Thank you. I couldn't remember the name. Mm -hmm. Fast Food Genocide is a brilliant read. It talks about the emotional, mental aspects, not just the physical of eating the standard American diet. And that really hit hard, you know, when that came out. Disease Proof Your Child was another one since I was raising my kids. But he is a wealth of information. And like you said, I love that he says it like it is. And I feel like I can see Dr. Furman in you. You know, when I look at your Instagram posts and you're posting all this informative stuff, like you'll take strawberries one day or tomatoes, and you talk about all the healthy parts of, you know, why is it so healthy? What does it do for us? I think that's really, really motivating. Um, and I love that you're that you're doing all of that. So fantastic. 
So what? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. What were you going to say? So I was, say, I was going to say two things from what you said. Now I know you're interviewing me, but I'm just curious. When you said you went out and bought his book and immediately changed everything, why did he have instant credibility with you? Why? Same why did you decide? You. Because I felt okay. like he didn't have an agenda, and he was so passionate. The way he—I mean, if you just look at yes. PBS yes. specials or his um, YouTube videos, he's so passionate. I've seen him speak a million times. I've had him speak at my events. I consider him a friend. Um, he's, he's just been an incredible resource for my family. He's just always there for us. And when he speaks, you can see the passion, you know, and he's not going to lie to you. He's not going to make stuff up. And like you said, it's easy to see that some have an agenda and like you, I love Dr. Greger, but I can see what you're saying. Um, but with Dr. Furman, he just, he's, he's really honest and passionate and just wants to educate and help people. And so it's Absolutely. the same reasons as you resonated with him. Mm -hmm. And then one more thing I wanted to mention about what you said when you talked about the uh, cashew cereal and saying that they say that they're healthy, but they're not. That's another thing that is a big stumbling block for people transitioning to a healthier diet is because you don't know that that's not healthy. You don't. I mean, I once thought that when I saw all natural on the package, that's what I want. All natural. Can't go wrong. It's all natural. And, you know, the big companies are aware of this. And so they put a lot of time and effort into figuring out little catchphrases and words and how to, you know, present things to keep people confused. And then, as you've heard, I'm sure, when people get confused, they say, oh, man, I might as well eat what I've been eating. They say, this is good. This is good. Oh, wait, this is good. Now it's not good. And so the confusion is, you know, plays to the advantage of these big companies to keep us all duped so we continue eating the junk. Um, so, you know, and, that, and that's one reason why, on my page, I try to include the informative part too, not just the recipes, but telling you the why behind the foods um, and the how behind the foods. Um, because, you know, I think that, I think when some, it's one thing to tell someone what to eat, but when you tell them why to eat it and they truly understand what it does, um, that's empowering and that makes a big difference. Absolutely. And I always tell people that I work with, I'm a coach like you, and, uh, and I also teach classes. I always tell people, don't just look at the front of the box. Don't just look at where it says whole grain or healthy or all natural or whatever, even organic is not enough. Read the ingredients. If it has ingredients that you can't pronounce, how is your body supposed to know what to do with them? It's not real food. You know, real food shouldn't have a label, first of all. And if it does, it should only have one or two ingredients max. I agree hundred percent. And that's the folly that they play with olive oil. Um, and I always tell people, don't, don't tell me, don't just tell me what's good about something. Tell me the rest. Olive oil is a perfect example because they say, oh, it's heart healthy. It's got monounsaturated fat and monounsaturated fat is good for your heart. So they go, it's, it's healthy. And then they go, oh, and you're replacing butter and you're replacing lard and you're replacing. So it's better. So they get you by comparing it to something that's horrible and then telling you what's positive. I'm going to do a video called broccoli in the Kool-Aid where I, this is some, just something I thought of, where I'm going to take some Kool-Aid and say, this is sugar, this is artificial color, this is water. I'm going to put a piece of broccoli in it. Now I can tell you that this has um, sulforaphane, um, <laughs> it has vitamin C, and, and it fights cancer. Now drink this Kool-Aid, it's good for you. But that's not the case. It's the broccoli and the Kool-Aid, and that's how they get you with olive oil. They talk about all the things it can do, or the few things it can do. It's cold press, it still has nutrients, it still has mother's But what else does it have? 120 calories per tablespoon. And, and unless you're fit and trim, that's, a, you know, five tablespoons of oil on a salad or into dip, and now you've got 500, 700, 800 additional calories. And because it has no fiber, you're going to absorb it quickly. It's going to be stored as fat in most cases. So, you know, but, but people really have a hard time with that. When, when oh, you say I know. Ex, extra virgin olive oil is not health food, oh, Oof. are you ready to fight or run, <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, where do you get your protein, right? I mean, how many times do we hear that ridiculous question? I know, right? It's yeah. but, but, um, but, 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 but Sharon, but Sharon, I don't want to say it's ridiculous though, because I was that person at one time. I I'm always too. empathetic in my approach. Yes. I mean, there was a time where you couldn't convince me that I could get enough protein without right. eating meat. So when people say that, I try to be patient and empathetic yeah. because, you know, it is confusing. It is What's confusing. ridiculous is not the fact that people are confused. It's the fact that these companies are pushing this misinformation. Yes. And there really is nowhere to get the truth unless you are like us and you do your own research, right? Because you're not gonna hear it from the school system. You're not gonna hear it from the government and you're not gonna hear it in most cases from the medical system because most doctors are not trained in nutrition. 
we're very fortunate now that we do have a number of different physicians and other medical professionals who are trained in plant-based nutrition. But back in the day, there were not any and doctors didn't know, like, it's crazy that you can take your pet to the vet and the, and the vet can tell you what to feed your pet, but you can go to the doctor. And if you're overweight or have high cholesterol, all they tell you is eat less, exercise more. What should mm-hmm. I eat? Doc? Well, just eat healthy food. They mm-hmm. don't really know. Sometimes they'll say fruits and vegetables, but it's like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts. I mean, th- those are the things they should be telling you. And most of the doctors don't know that themselves. So that's what's ridiculous. I'm not, I, I well, like to empathize with the individuals who are misinformed. I certainly understand why. And I was too. Yes. Yes. And what's worse is that, um, you know, these big companies fund uh, the pharmaceutical companies give grants and, and funds to, to the, you know, medical um, establishment to get the results they want. And, you know, there's people out here, doctors who do studies and they're funded by people um, who are selling the meat and selling the processed stuff, and you know what their agenda is, so you're going to get them the results they want, and that just adds to the confusion, because this doctor said you can eat all the olive oil you want. This doctor said blah, 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 so it's, it's, it's a tough thing to navigate, um, and unless you're steadfast and just determined, absolutely determined to get to the bottom of the truth and make sense of it, you'd end up confused, yeah. Absolutely, so how long did it take you to start seeing results, and what results did you see first in terms of your health, emotional health? Um, <clears throat> yeah, well, uh, yeah, so the first thing I noticed was weight loss, you know, um, and that was good because I, I, I said in another interview I did, I wasn't feeling bad. I wasn't feeling bad. I was pre-diabetic, pre-hypertensive, had some other stuff going on. But unfortunately, there are a lot of things that ail us that you don't know until you have an event. And so you can have high blood pressure, um, high blood sugar, and until you get dizzy and almost fall out one day, uh, you have no clue or until you go and get your, you know, your measurements. So um, I'm saying to you that I wasn't going to the doctor because I felt horrible. Um, I thought I was doing fine um, until they said, you're pre-diabetic, pre diabetic and now we're going to run some more tests. Then I realized I wasn't. And another thing that I say to people, and people usually like when I say this, just something I say, you have no idea how good it feels to feel good until you feel good. So what I'm saying is I was operating at my norm. I was operating in my space of what feeling good was. And I thought it was great. But man, when I changed my diet and I lost the weight and I started exercising and the mental clarity, the amount of energy I had, um, you know, now I'm saying, whoa, okay, wait a minute. Now I understand that wasn't that wasn't feeling good. This is feeling good. This is feeling good. But if you haven't experienced, how would you know? How long did it take? To... To feel like you were losing weight, to feel like you had more energy, to feel like you had more mental well, energy. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was measuring it, and um, I was losing weight pretty quickly. I mean, you know, because I started juicing and started taking some bread out and stuff. It, it can, ha- you know, look the the more the heavier you are, uh, the quicker you're going to lose those initial, you know, pounds. And so losing ten pounds when you, in my case, was probably eighty pounds overweight, eighty ninety pounds. You know, it doesn't take long. You know, you change some stuff and start exercising. Whereas before I was a couch potato eating potatoes, you know, now I'm up and active. So um, so it didn't take long to to start losing the weight and noticing noticing things. And that's very motivating. Were you active prior to uh, starting this journey, the plant-based journey? Were you physically active? Did you exercise? Well, like a lot of people, um, I would exercise in spurts. You know, I mean, I always knew I wanted to exercise and we make New Year's resolutions and promises to ourselves and I start and, you know, each time I fall off, then it'd be a few months and I start back and I go a little longer then I fall off and I miss a few months. So that was a cycle that I was in. So I was never consistently active after maybe 22, 23, when I stopped playing basketball and doing those kind of things. Um, I was never consistently active. Uh, so when I did make the decision to eat better and become active, you know, it changed pretty quickly, it being my weight and the way I was feeling. Did you always like to cook? No, no, I did not. Always. Well, yes and no. When I wanted to, like I didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to have to cook, you know what I mean? And my mom always cooked for me. And then after that, I was with my grandmother a little while. And then when I was married, um, I, I was never the person that had to cook. You know what I mean? But I could cook. I, never, I had a few five or six things that well, every time I made them, people were like, man, this is really good. Um, and so um, and so I enjoyed it as long as it was on my terms. I can cook when I want to cook. And if I'm not motivated to cook, I don't have to. 
So I, I was never someone who just loved to be in the kitchen um, unless it was on my terms here and there. Okay, so when did you start cooking? Well, you know what? I really don't cook. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> I, I have that. a cooking page. Well, well, the reason I say that, <laughs> and this kind of this kind of segues into another question I know you were gonna uh, want to discuss, is because what I eat, Sharon, is like raw food, like like raw food, like literally Monday through Friday, and usually Saturday and Sunday, but definitely Monday through Friday, my meal every day is a gigantic salad. It has about 30 to 35 ingredients in it, gigantic salad. Um, and I have a bowl of quinoa with black beans. I have a three bean hummus uh, with um, chickpeas, navy beans and pinto beans all mixed up, a little tahini in there. So I have hummus, I have that, um, and these are small bowls I'm talking about, right? But I have hummus and then I have the quinoa with black beans. I have that ginormous salad. I eat a couple of nori sheets. Um, and what am I forgetting? Oh, and then for dessert, um, I eat fruit. I eat uh, about four different berries, blueberries, blackberries, cranberries, strawberries, raspberries, and then some cherries, pomegranates when they're in season. I'm telling you, at, and in the morning, I eat a seed mixture that has uh, chia seeds, hemp seeds, flax seeds, always forget one, sesame seeds, no sesame seeds, no broccoli seeds. Um, and then I eat that with um, some tomato paste, um, you know, just to get those essential fats and that kind of thing. So, but, but those things I just named, now, all combined, that's over 50 foods, over 50 foods every day right. that I eat, over 50 foods. And nothing's out of the can. Even the beans I buy in pressure cooking. So when I say I don't cook, I'm saying that's because in the morning I'm, eating, I'm just grinding up seeds and eating seeds and tomato paste. Uh, and then for dinner, I only eat twice. I eat five in the morning, five in the evening. Uh, for dinner, I'm eating a large salad with the quinoa and blah, blah, blah. So I do cook the quinoa, but I do it ahead of time. So I'm not in the kitchen cooking a lot because I eat a lot of raw food. I cook to do my page. And then on the weekend, whenever I prepare on Friday, I do my videos on Friday, um, I'll eat it with a small salad. If it's a dessert, I'll, I'll spread that over a few days and eat it. So that's when I'm, you know, you know, have some, some variation in my diet. Uh, so basically Friday is a day, is a day I cook and the other days it's just putting together raw foods. So if you're looking for a place to send all that amazing food that you cook on Instagram, because you're not eating, <laughs> please send it here. <laughs> I'd love to have it. Right. It looks right. like, seriously, I look at your page, I'm so inspired. And, and the thing about your recipes is they're not typical recipes. They're very creative. They're very innovative. So what I want to know is where do you come up with these ideas? Do you constantly look at recipes all day long? Do you have a particular source that inspires you? Where do you come up with these ideas? Well, it's a combination of that and other things as well. Um, some of it is, yes, I, you know, I look on Instagram <laughs> at other people's pages and say, oh, they made a this, but they're making it with oil and they're making it with sugar. And I go, I can make that um, myself. Uh, things that I've liked, I've got sweet potato pie. That's one of my favorite things. And I've, I've posted that uh, mac and cheese. So a lot of things are just traditional dishes. See, here's the thing. So um, the way I eat is crazy. And I'm saying crazy to me, it's not to me, it's not. But I, but I understand, you know, my, my, my you know, I understand myself I, uh, and how people view it. The way I eat is crazy. And if I put what I eat on Instagram and say, hey, guys, come and eat healthy with me. Uh, you know who would my followers would be? My mom and my daughter. OK, <laughs> and they would do it begrudgingly. OK, so so what I'm saying is, even though um, I, I don't regularly eat anything that I post on there pretty much. Um, I want to help people. And, and I know that uh, I have people in my family, friends of mine, and, and I was a guy that if you say, hey, you're eating the standard American diet, now come eat salads and hummus. It's not going to work. So I have to show people that you can transition into this. And that's why I have burgers, veggie burgers, of course. And that's why I do things that mimic chicken sandwiches and chicken, but, you know, all kinds of stuff, because I want these gateway recipes where people can say, wait a minute, that's healthy. I can do that. I can do that burger. I can do that mac and cheese. I can do that sweet potato pie. I can do that this. I can do that that. Oh, that's a bowl right there, but it looks like it has chicken. Oh, those are mushrooms, which I'm about to show you guys. I can do that. So, um, so, so even though I'm not eating those things, that is why I, you know, research on Instagram. Like you said, I use um, recipes for or foods from the past that I know I love and people love, and um, it's a combination of all that. And it's my passion, Sharon, because. 
Like my manager is always saying, man, how do you have enough time to do all this? You got a cooking show starting tomorrow, by the way. You, you got the Instagram page. You do this. You exercise every day. How do you do this? And I said, look, man, I'm powered by passion, bro. I'm powered by passion. This is not a game for me. I'm not someone out here who wants to be famous, who wants to make money. I didn't get on it. I'm telling you, I didn't know you could make money on Instagram. I didn't know. I know now, but I didn't know that. That was not my motive. It's not my motive now. I just want to help people. And every day I have dozens of people look at my comments saying, I changed this. My husband changed that. Hey, I didn't know this. Thanks for telling me that. Now I can have this. I can have that. That's my payment. I love it. It inspires me. And so I'm, you know, I'm thinking health and nutrition. I'm telling you all day and night, I'm thinking health and nutrition. I just I love it. I completely relate to you. I read, I read, I listen to webinars and podcasts. I'm always learning. It's been my passion for years too. And listening to you, you really do sound like Dr. Furman. Like you can, you can hear coming <laughs> through and you're so, you just really want to help people and you really are a gift. I wish I had found you sooner, Javon. I really do. I wish I'd found you sooner on Instagram, but I'm so glad I did now. Have you ever tried sending one of your recipes to Dr. Furman to include on his website? I have not. I have not. Again, I'm, I'm really not a seeker, you know, because people... Um, in my comments, always tell me, you should be on the food show. You should get with Tabitha yeah. Brown. You should get with this. You should do that. You should do this. I'm really not motivated to do it. If yeah. it happens organically, I ain't going to turn it down. Don't get me yeah. wrong. And even Chef AJ, people will say, hey, you should try Chef AJ. I'm going to write her a letter on your behalf. I'm like, okay, go for it. Uh, but it's AJ, like they want to put. Yeah. AJ is like my me. sister. We are super, super close. And I have already talked to her about you and I'll be sending her this recording and I'm sure that she will have you on her show. I shouldn't say that, but I'm pretty sure she'll have you on her show. And we really deserve, I mean, she's got a much bigger audience than I ever will and ever care to, but I'm sure that you will get a lot more exposure that way. And you should, you know, I know that you're not in it for the money or the fame, but the fact of the matter is that the more you get out there, the more people you help, you know, whether you no get doubt. Or, or wealthy as a result, I think personally, I think you should. But, um, you know, your, your inspiration, your, your goal is very pure. And I think um, you would be an asset to so many people who, you know, I hear from people all the time who say it's too hard. I can't do it. It's too much work. And, you know, basically listening to you, it's really not that much work. And I know you do a lot of creative recipes, but the fact is you don't eat that way every day. You found the foods that, in, that, that keep you, you know, going, keep you feeling good. And that's what you eat every day you get creative in the kitchen sometimes and you're doing that to help other people. But I think people get sometimes so overwhelmed by the amount of prep and the amount of shopping and the amount of attention they have to pay. And I always say, look, it's an investment in your health. You can either spend your years, your later years, hopefully um, not your early years, but going to doctors and getting prescriptions and being on medications and then having to take another medication because of the side effects of that medication. Or you can just invest a little time in taking care of your, yourself preventatively. And you're a, a shiny example of that. And I hope I am too. I try to sh show people that all the time. Yeah, yeah, we spend a lot of money on food. We have a family of five. We spend a lot of money on food. And I, I love to cook. I, like you, I hated to cook. I, you didn't say you hated it. I hated it because I used to be a lab technician. So I would be at work all day weighing and measuring and stirring. And I just did not want to deal with that when I got home. So we would go to the local organic market and get their prepared foods, which unfortunately, although they were somewhat healthy, they were made with a lot of sugar, salt, and oil. And then when I found out about, for me, the entry point was T. Colin Campbell's book, um, The China Study. China Study. That mm -hmm. was my entry in. And when I learned about casein being such a potent cancer promoter, that was it. You know, we gave up the dairy immediately and I found Chef AJ. That's how we met in 2011, I believe. I went to a, a conference called Vegetarian Summerfest in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and she was doing a cooking demonstration and I attended and I was blown away by her food. It was so good, so delicious, <clears throat> put her on the spot and brought it home. And started feeding my family her recipes and they loved them. And that got me excited and inspired to keep cooking. And so now I'm a nutrition and cooking instructor for PCRM. And I cook almost since we got the kitchen done, I'm cooking every single day. I, it's my passion, like you. I like not the cooking part, but just the nutrition part, learning and then yes. you know, improving the way that we eat all the time, making sure I get in 
the G bombs, which I know you can talk about um, every single day and just really putting that effort in and it's so worth it. You know, it's just, it is so worth it. So I guess what I'd like to do now is, is uh, give you a chance to do your, your recipe demonstration, because I think that's what everybody's super excited about. And I, I said this before you got on, but I want everyone to know that I personally think that the secret to success on a plant-based diet is really in the sauces and the dressings because they make vegetables in particular taste great. And if you can just use the same basic ingredients like you and I do, you know, the same grain every day, even the same bean or different beans every day um, and just basic, you know, vegetables. If you have different sauces to put on every single day, you'll feel like you're eating in a gourmet restaurant every night. That's what we did when we were staying in the hotel. So I'm excited that you're gonna be demoing that tonight. So what is the recipe you're gonna be sharing with us? Uh, so I'm doing a no chicken dill ranch bowl. Um, and I say no chicken because um, I found that a lot, for a lot of my family members and friends um, that, that want to transition, the hard thing is, well, I can't give up meat. And I'm going, listen, man, you can do that. So I make a lot of dishes using different types of mushrooms from oyster to lion's mane to mataki, all of them, um, to mimic um, you know, meat dishes. And so tonight I'm doing this no chicken dill ranch bowl. Um, and, um, and I'm going to start with some, with some mushrooms here. Um, these are oyster mushrooms. Um, one of my favorites and people are often ask me what mushrooms do I use? And I use them all depending on what I'm trying to do. If I want to mimic chicken in particular, I'll use the oyster mushrooms, um, because I just feel that their texture is, is the one that, that best suits that. Um, and then I use others for, for various things, but so tonight, um, I'm going to going to use these oyster mushrooms. So I'm going to go ahead and put them in the pan and turn it on. Can you see my pan? Mm -hmm. Perfectly. Okay. Okay, good. So I'm going to put them in the pan and turn them on. It's going to take it a, a while to, to heat up. Uh, I use cast iron primarily, um, really exclusively at this point. I was trying some green pans that were nonstick. I've done a ton of research and I get, you know, yeah. So I, that's not the way to go in my opinion. So I use um, cast iron. This is the only cast iron pan that I found that is pre-coated and, um, and said to be non-stick to a degree. And I've had wonderful results with it. Um, in fact, um, I have another one over there, a larger one. Um, so anyway, so I have my mushrooms in here. And um, the trick with mushrooms is to remember that they exude a lot of water. So if you notice, I didn't put anything in this pan. I didn't put any, anything. Um, now I have some broth right here, some vegetable broth that I made. And um, if they start to stick a little too much, and sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, if they do, I'll add a little broth, not oil, you know, just broth. And sometimes I'll use water, just depends. Um, but I'm going to give them a little time to, to start heating up. As they heat up, they'll start exuding some water. That's what I want. And then we're going to wait for the water to dissipate uh, to where it's just a little bit left. And then at that point, um, we're going to add some seasonings that I have pre-mixed here. And that's really the trick. Um, whether, where you're making a veggie ground beef, um, or anything, um, that, that it's all about the seasonings. And, um, so I'm going to add those at the right time. And once, uh, once these are cooked, I'm going to add them here. So this is a, a, a bowl that I put together a little earlier and everything is on a bed of quinoa. Now I use quinoa. I don't eat any white rice because it's high glycemic and has no nutrients. The endosperm um, has been removed. The bran has been removed. It's just it's just empty calories, basically. That spikes blood sugar. So I don't eat any white rice. Brown rice is better, but then you run into the issues with the arsenic. And if you can find brown rice that is sourced in a particular area that you know is pristine, the water is pristine. Okay, maybe it works. But for me personally, I don't eat any type of rice at all. My go-to's are quinoa and millet. Quinoa, ninety percent of the time millet here and there. I do some cauliflower rice as well. But tonight I made some millet. So I have this on a bed of millet and I've got some yellow peppers, uh, some red cabbage. I start, I'm starting to hear them there. Uh, some carrots, a uh, little green leaf and strawberries. Now, some people don't like fruit in salads. Um, I love fruit in salads. I don't always do it, but I am tonight. Because remember guys, I'm going to eat this when we're done. So I, you know, I just had to tailor to what I want there. Um, so that's what I had. Quinoa, yes. So I'm going to sit this back aside. And then once the do, mushrooms are done, I'll just lay them in front. Mm -hmm. Do you ever do buckwheat or teff or amaranth or any of those other pseudo grains? I, I, I don't. I don't. I'm not opposed to them. Um, They're really I'm not good. opposed to them at all. 
Yeah, yeah. You know, and people often ask me that, like, well, what about amorous and what about Tess? And I say, listen, you know, when I'm happy and, and content, I'm not out there trying to find the next thing. Right. I, you know, right. Um, now if someone comes to me and say, hey, this blows quinoa away. Now I'll listen. <laughs> now I'll listen because because my decisions are based on nutrition. Um, right. I'm not partial to anything. I always tell people there's nothing that I eat that I can't give up tomorrow. If you tell right. me it's not healthy for me, it can be my favorite thing. And I've done it. It can be my favorite thing. You tell me it's not healthy. I believe you. It's gone. Yeah. No remorse. No, yeah. no effort. Um, there's so it's much, gone because. Yeah. There's so many uh, other options. There's always another option. Like the yes, rice. Absolutely. When you heard about arsenic and Dr. Furman talking about, you know, rice is not good anymore. He doesn't advise people to eat it. It was a big deal here, although we never ate white rice. We did eat um, red and black and wild rice, not so much brown. But even those rices do have some arsenic and you can cook them in or you can soak them, cook them in a very large volume. Um, yeah, Adrian says wheat berries. Yeah, the problem with wheat berries is some people have gluten issues, gluten sensitivity or celiac. So a lot of people try to avoid gluten. Um, but yeah, wheat berries are good too. I mean, there's so many delicious grains out there. I like to experiment with different things. I think it's fun. Um, so I'm, I, like tonight, I just bought um, Kodo millet because I read about it on Nutrition Facts as a really healthy type of millet. So we're gonna try that out. But yeah, I mean, if you're happy with what you're eating, I know Dr. Will Bolswitz is doing the Empowered Gut Series right now, the um, summit. And he's always talking about diversity of plants. It's very important to have a diversity. Absolutely. Not Absolutely. eating the same thing every day. So I try to vary it up, you know, but like you, I have my favorite things and we tend to stick with them. Yeah, and I got to say, I told you I eat the same thing every day, but remember I also said it's over 50 foods and that's not right. an exaggeration. So you might say, well, you're eating the same thing every day, but yeah, okay, if I divide it, I can eat 10 different things for five days or I can eat all 50 every day, you know? Right. So I'm still getting a great variety, which is good for your microbiome. You want to, you know, feed those good gut bacteria. There's something you said I was going to respond to, but I forget. Okay, guys, so now this is a presser, right? This, this right here is a weighted presser that I use to get the moisture out of the mushrooms. Cause part of what makes the mushrooms so good is to make sure you get that water out. If not, they can have a little bit of an off taste. So I'm gonna take this now. I kind of centered my mushrooms in the pan and I'm just gonna take this and we'll push down. Where on. do we get that, okay. Javon? Where do you get that? Is it called a presser? No, no, uh, to be honest with you, as I was saying, I was like, what is this thing called? And I just said, I'll call it a presser. They don't know. Uh, so I call it a presser. Um, I forget what it's called, a weighted, uh, I forget what it's called. Actually, I have one right over there. Oh, no, 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 that's my cast iron pan. I don't know the technical name for it, um, but I have an extra one. Um, I can let you know and you can- Yeah, I was gonna say, let me know later and I'll send it out. And also what is, I'm sure I'll get this question. What is the brand of the cast iron pan that you use? Stargazer, Stargazer. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. And, you know, listen, um, on my Instagram page, um, I don't know if anybody subscribed to it there or follows it, but on my Instagram page, I have all these things on my link tree. So if you go on my homepage and go to my link tree, you'll see the cast iron pan. I haven't added this yet, but I will be. I've got the blender that I use, the mixer that I use. Um, oats, for example, I'll only eat um, organic certified glyphosate free oats because if they're not certified glyphosate free, you're probably getting glyphosate. But now I've said a lot of things, but oats is more prevalent than anything else because it really absorbs it. And that stuff can do horrible things. So, um, but all these kind of products that I've researched and that I prefer, I share it by going, by putting it in my link tree. So you can follow me on Instagram and check my link tree. Great. And you're also on YouTube, right? You have a YouTube channel also called Healthy Vegan Eating. Yes, I'm on YouTube. Now I haven't been, you know, as consistent there. I got maybe a hundred videos. I've got almost 300 on Instagram, 250, something like that. But the big deal with YouTube for me right now, and I'm promoting this a lot, is I'm doing a cooking show. Because so many people said to me, hey, can you show us step by step? I want to see this, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well, this is Instagram. It's a short, you know, video platform. And so people kept saying it. And I try to respond to what people want. So now I'm doing a cooking show. My first episode is tomorrow at five on YouTube. Healthy vegan eating, no spaces. And you'll go to my page. You won't see a cooking show yet because again, tomorrow is the initial one. But I'm going to be doing a, um, a no chicken Alfredo lasagna. And man, is it good. I mean, you know, because when I made it, it was my first time making it. I couldn't believe how good it was. Uh, but it's so good. So check that out tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday. It'll be there once I post it. 
But every Friday at five, I'll be posting a new cooking show on YouTube where I'm going step by step like I am now, but even in more detail than I am now. Everything from, you know, anything you can, you can think of, I'll be making. Excellent. So subscribe, so, subscribe, subscribe absolutely, to my YouTube channel. Absolutely, definitely. If you're not signed up for his YouTube channel, definitely go ahead and subscribe. So Javon, how many times does it take you before you refine the recipe? Like you, you have an idea, you try it. How does that go? Like, does it take you several weeks to perfect it? Or is it usually pretty quick? It's pretty quick. I mean, you know, it's pretty quick. Now, now I have my fails. I, and, and that's something that I tell people in my cooking show. You know, I'm like, I don't I don't always get it right because um, people often marvel because I'm editing it. You know, of course, I'm going to make myself look good <laughs> when I'm editing it on on Instagram. Um, but but, you know, but the cooking show is is more organic and more free flowing. So that's a lot less edited. It's still edited, but not as much. But to answer your question directly, I don't usually have issues here and there. I have to throw something away and say, man, I didn't get that right. They're too hard. They're too dry. They're too this especially when it comes to baking, because when it comes to baking, it can really be delicate, you know, when you're dealing with baking soda and, and how long to cook something and trying to do it without oil and doing it, you know, non, you know, it can, it can, that can be a little difficult, but I don't have that. I don't have that many fails to be honest with you. Very rare. Usually, usually the first time is it. So this is your gift, Ben. Are you coming out with a cookbook? Well, you know what? That's what everybody asks me every day on Instagram. <laughs> and at one point, I thought I was going to have to go into hiding if I didn't come up with a cookbook soon because <laughs> they were ganging up on me. People were saying it and they were, they were getting 20 likes. Where's the cookbook? Where's the, you know, so I was like, well, I got to do something. So I looked into doing a cookbook and it costs money and you got to go out and sell yourself. I'm not good at that. Um, you know, I'm not good at talking myself up. So um, I put that on hold, but I'm glad you asked because what I am doing, and this is the thing I'm most excited about along with the cooking show, is um, I have um, a company developing an app for me a healthy vegan, um, what I call it, cooking and fitness app. And so it's going to have all my recipes with the videos. It will print out the recipes for you. It will generate grocery lists. If you have allergies, you can put them in. It'll omit that and give you the foods that don't have those ingredients. It gives you a shopping list for the week. It gives you macronutrients. If you want to break it down, how many carbs am I getting? How much protein am I getting? I'm going to do fitness videos because I also work out and I'll be talking about that stuff too. Um, you'll have my cooking show on there. It's a one-stop shop. Uh, so that's what I'm really excited about. I think it's going to help a lot of people yes. and, uh, that should be, um, available sometime in July ish somewhere in there. Oh so that, that's my answer to the cookbook right now. It's better than the cookbook. In it, my is. Opinion. I, not, it really is. Um, and not only that now, 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 I'm also going to have it where people, um, can consult with me. Like, you know, I'll charge a fee and talk to me for 30 minutes for a small amount of money. And I'll kind of coach people, you know, virtually, you know, like we're doing now and that kind of thing. So I, I'm really excited about that. Really excited. That is if I may, amazing. Yes. Um, if I may, I just want to keep you guys in tune with what I'm doing here. So the water has pretty much dissipated and now I don't want them to burn. So I'm turning this down. I'm going to add just a touch more broth. Okay. And now I'm going to add my seasonings. And this is what makes the difference right here. Um, this is some garlic powder, some onion powder, some salt, some paprika, and a couple other things. And I'm just going to sprinkle these on. And this is, looks like a lot of, I don't know if you guys can see in the pan, but that looks like a lot of spices for the amount of mushrooms that's in there. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this is, this is what does it. This is what gives it the, uh, the flavor and, uh, and makes people say, wow, that's mushrooms. That is so good. So I'm putting those in. I'm going to turn it back up just a little. And um, and now let's let's make uh, let's make some some dill ranch sauce here. Those are ready. Now now Sharon, I really like you, and I'm saying that because I've had a lot of people ask me not a lot but several people ask me to do a live cooking demonstration. I've always said no. I said nah. I don't if I can't if I can't edit it and make it look like I wanted to look. I'm not interested. And I'm telling you, I don't budge. But your energy is so beautiful and your oh. passion, like mine. It, it, yeah, I just love your energy and your passion. I, you know, we're, we're joined in that way. So, um, so, so here I am. Here there I am you go. This. See, I am so touched that you said that. I really am. That makes my whole week because um, oh, I, right. I, like I said, I've been watching you and 
when I find somebody I like, I get really excited about them. And I've been so excited about you. And I keep thinking I've got to like, I, you make me want to go out and have a conference today. <laughs> you know, I haven't had a conference. Yeah. We used to have a, a yearly conference with a, a local physician um, every year called the Eat Well, Stay Well One Day Immersion. For those of you who are local, maybe you've attended. And uh, I haven't done anything since COVID. And I've been kind of gun shy about it. But the next one I have, I really, really, really want you there. I really would love to have you there. So I'm, I'm thinking about it. I'm trying to get my energy up to do it again. And um, maybe maybe sometime late this year or next year, but I would love to have you there. I think you're an incredible demonstrator because you explain every step so well. And I'm really honored that you've taken tonight to, to break that in. So thank you. Well, thank you. I, I mean, I'm honored that you asked me on. So I, I'm loving this. Um, that conference scares me a bit. That's not my realm either. But if you ask me, I know I'm not going to be able to say no. Javon, um, listen, but I am like, <laughs> seriously, can I tell you this? I'm, I was voted the quietest girl in my senior class. I am extremely shy. Everybody who knows me really well knows that. But when you stand Hi, up. Joe, this group, is Terry. How are you doing? Just calling to remind you that. Sorry. Um, when you stand up in front of, in a, in a room with a couple hundred people, when you look out at the faces and you realize these people need help. I did a cooking demonstration on stage with Dr. Furman. I was wow. a nervous wreck about doing it, but I thought, you know what? It, it becomes bigger than you when you're standing in front of people. It literally becomes bigger than you. And you don't even have time to think about how self-conscious you are. What if I screw up? You, don't, you really don't have time. And so, I mean, this, this is a perfect example. You have stepped outside of your comfort zone and this is gonna inspire so many people. So I hope this is the first of many live cooking demonstrations that you do. Yeah, well, I mean, I wanna say I'm not uncomfortable in front of people. I used to be like you in high school. I literally took some F on assignments because I didn't wanna get in front of people, yeah. but it's cause I was self-conscious. I'm being totally serious. I was self-conscious. I would not, I would literally shake and sweat. I mean, I couldn't, not I wouldn't do it, I couldn't do it. I, I was phobic about it. And that's not an exaggeration. Um, and social media was never my thing either. And when you said earlier, um, you reach so many more people, if you go out there and put yourself out there, you can reach more people. That's why I'm doing social media because people told me years ago, do social media, do social media. I'm like, nah, that's not me, that's not me. And then finally I said, well, let me try it. And, and here I am. So, um, you know, you just never know what the future holds, right? Um, so for the sauce, I've, I've got some cashews and I soaked these for a couple of hours already. Um, so these are soaked cashews. Um, I'm going to add some uh, hemp seeds <clears throat> and some spices, some salt and garlic. Um, I'm going to add some fresh dill, fresh dill. I'm going to add a date, uh, then some apple cider vinegar. And then I'm going to add a cup of water. And guys, let me tell you something. That's simple, right? I mean, I just, how long did it take me to put that in here? I mean, 30 seconds, maybe. You wouldn't believe how good this dressing is. You know what I mean? We go to this so long, we pick up a bottle of dressing and it has oil and sugar and gums and additives and all this stuff in it. And it's so easy to make it right here at home. It's so easy. I didn't know that until I started doing it. Uh, now I do. We made that one and, um, in the hotel and absolutely loved it. Delicious. Yes. Yes. People really like uh, the sauce. I hear that all the time. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And so now I'm going to get this here. All right. Now, I don't know if you want to mute me. This is pretty loud. My headphones have it. I think okay, it'll yeah. yeah. My Yeah. My headphones should cancel it. If not, just yell, stop. No, no it's okay. Go ahead. It. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. All right. Yeah, Zoom mutes it. Remember we made this one?
that probably seemed like an eternity. Um, <laughs> it was actually 40, it was 40 seconds. I have wow. this little, uh, I always start what kind with 40 of seconds. Is that? is that a Nutribullet? It's a Ninja. I've never had a Nutribullet. A lot of people ask me that. I've never had a bullet. Um, this is okay. a Ninja here. Looks um, similar. But 40, 40 seconds is my go-to. Yeah, that's really good. I'm going to add a little more water. Always keep a little more water to the side in case I need it. And this time it won't take 40 seconds. <laughs> it's okay. It was muted. Okay. Okay, that's what I was looking for. The right consistency now. Okay, and again, guys, that was so easy. That was so easy to make this dressing. And there's enough dressing in here, depending on how heavy you use your dressing. Uh, I could see it being a reasonable four servings. Um, so that little effort, four servings of dressing, no oil, none of the junk, no sugar, you know. Um, it's pretty impressive. Javon, what is the recipe this. under on your uh, Instagram or on your um, YouTube? What is the recipe called again? Well, this particular recipe? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I did a no chicken dill ranch on there. Um, okay. If you go to my Instagram, I, in my tabs and my highlights, I have a highlight that's labeled bowls and I have mm -hmm. a highlight that's labeled sauces. So I know that the, that the dill ranch, as you know, is in my sauces. Right. I've done a few different bowls. I don't know if I've ever done this exact one. I know I've never done one with strawberries, so I don't know that this exact one is there, but I got several other bowls that are there. Sure. Okay. I'll send out the recipe for the dill ranch um, after when I send out the recording. Okay. So now what I like to do, guys, is um, <clears throat> I've layered I've layered my stuff again, strawberries, green leaf, carrots, red cabbage, uh, yellow peppers over a bed of quinoa. And then I leave a little space in the front to put the mushrooms so um, so I can just mix it in and eat it as I like. So I'm gonna take and uh, put the mushrooms on now. Javon, do you ever eat in restaurants? Um, I don't, I, I don't. I, I don't wanna say never, mm -hmm. but I don't. Um, you know, last time I ate in a restaurant, let me qualify that. Last time I ate in a restaurant was about three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and that's because I was in Montreal and I was at home and I wasn't, but you know, that kind of thing. But I don't because I mean, what restaurant do you know of that? that I mean, I'm serious about this. Like I don't eat oil. Not I don't right. usually eat oil. I, I don't eat oil. And what restaurant are you going to go to and find dishes with no oil, no wheat, no refined sugar, no we rice? Actually, we're fortunate here um, in our area. We have one restaurant in Herndon, Virginia called Green Fair Organic Cafe. And they uh -huh. don't use any oil. They may use salt. They don't use refined sugar, uh, but absolutely no oil. And they teach the Food for Life classes, the PCRM Food for Life classes. So they're very much in line with, with what do, we do. Do they use wheat? I don't know if they, I don't think they're gluten-free, but you can certainly get okay. dishes that are. Well, gluten, you know, wheat for me, the issue is not the gluten. The, the issue for me with wheat is the same thing as, um, as rice. You know, right. the way wheat is processed, everything's removed and, and it's just a high glycemic mess. Right. Um, okay, so now, um, is this close enough? Can you see what I've got here? Beautiful, so I've yeah. Got, I've got the mushrooms now added to the, to the front of the bowl here. And then I'm just going to take my um, my dill sauce and um, and put it on here. Beautiful. That looks like something you'd get in a gourmet restaurant. I agree. Right. <laughs> Have you ever thought of opening a restaurant? You know, I get that question a lot too. And Susan, I'm not sharing. I'm sorry. Um, the answer is absolutely not. Again, <laughs> my motive is not money. It's not money. And I know you say, well, you can do a restaurant and still reach people. And hey, listen, I don't want to do all that work. You know what I mean? I don't want to manage people. I just want to help people. So even if I could open a restaurant and make a million dollars, I have zero interest in it. I'd rather empower people to leave the restaurant and go home and make it. You, you with me? So I'd be the guy standing out there with the sign saying, you can make this food. You can make, you know, I, I don't, I, I have 
no interest well, in that. Um, the fact is, all. people do like eating in restaurants for social reasons mainly. Oh, no doubt, no do. doubt. No One thing you could do, Javon, is you could inspire restaurants to create dishes like this because a lot of restaurants aren't open to creating healthy vegan dishes. In fact, the, the vegan restaurants are some of the most unhealthy because they're trying to make food that tastes like meat, right? So they'll load it with the sugar, salt, and oil, and it's as far from healthy as you can get. But if you could Absolutely. inspire them, you know, I don't know if you have a local restaurant that maybe you'd consider working with. I do. And I've definitely worked with a couple of restaurants here. And I, in fact, told meetups at them, or at least used to before um, COVID came along, but they worked with me and they came up with SOS, you know, sugar, salt, oil, free entrees and uh, got repeat business because of it. So you never know who you can inspire. So that's a beautiful thing that you did that. Um, <clears throat> that's not really my lane. Again, I'm not good at selling myself, even selling an idea. Oh, I wasn't even, I don't. Yeah. It was just, it was just so that my group, you know, I have this big meetup group with 3000 members in it. And certainly not all of them are here tonight, but there are a lot of people who follow what we do and they, they are going to go out to eat no matter what. It's like you and I, like, oh. even though people don't eat those gourmet foods, even though you don't rather eat those gourmet foods that you make for Instagram, we both know people like to go out to eat. So Absolutely. if I can give them healthy options, because I've worked with a restaurant and shared, you know, here's the way we eat. And I had to go into one of those restaurants. I remember it was an Ethiopian restaurant and I had to beg them to make the food without oil. And they were really afraid. And I said, I promise you, my group will like them. And so they did it and they tested it before we came in on some of their regular patrons and the patrons actually liked it. And so when our group would come in, they would do everything SOS free. And of course, everybody loved it. It was one of the most popular meetups I did. So, you know, you, you have to convince these people that there are people out there like us who don't need the oil and the salt in our food, who don't even like I, it. I, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, and I want to be crystal clear that I am not in any way saying that no one should go to a restaurant or I dislike restaurants. Right. I'm not saying that sure. at all. I am the biggest live and let live person in the world. And I'll meet you at the restaurant. I, <laughs> if people invite me and it doesn't make them uncomfortable, I'm just sitting there talking while everybody else is eating and talking. I'm comfortable if you are, but I think they start to feel judged. Um, I don't know, but all I'm saying is I'm not against restaurants. I'll go to them. I'll, you know, with other people, you know, but I, but I don't, I don't compromise what I eat at all. Yeah, so no, I agree. I always bring my own food when I go to a restaurant. I don't care. I mean, they don't care. Nobody seems to mind. I brought my own grain into a Chinese restaurant and maybe had like a bowl of steamed kale or something and just use my own grain and my own sauce that I bring with me. Nobody has ever said a word to me. Absolutely. Nor should they, in my opinion. Not I right. mean, you know, to each their own. I don't know if I showed the finished product it's, up close or not, but this is it. I wish it wasn't um, so late because I would make that right now. <laughs> that looks amazing. Well, you know, I, I don't usually eat after five, but tonight's an exception, you know, because <laughs> I ain't throwing it away. No you way. Know, so I, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be indulging in this oh, uh, when we're done. It's delicious. Yeah. Delicious. Is yeah, there any particular... What kind of quinoa do you like? Do you like the colored quinoa or do you just eat the, the white quinoa? I eat both. I eat the pearl and the tricolor. Um, I like them both. Uh, I, I, I find that I have an easier time cooking the, the tricolor. I'm, I'm good at both at cooking both, but tricolored is, is my preference. Yeah, tricolor is good. And I've had the black individually and the red individually, and they're both really good too. I, I guess I like a little bit of variety. I like to try new things. Yes, and that's why I like the tricolor. I figure, you know, yeah. each one has some different nuances. Yeah, so I just give me give them all to. Me. I'll get all the nutrients from all three. So, what is your absolute favorite thing to eat? I know you've made so many dishes, and I'm not saying your everyday food, but like, what do you get really? You said your sweet potato pie, but what do you really, really get excited about? Um. Well, that's going to be boring, and then I can give you my second one okay. if you like, if I can think about that, but a, but a, a great-tasting salad, because a great-tasting salad is the thing that hits me, hits my palate, and gives me that mental high as well, it, I'm, I, and again, it sounds corny and contrived, but I'm no. just telling you the truth. When I'm eating healthy food, I just feel good about it. Like, I just, the taste, I'm loving the taste. But mentally, just knowing what I'm doing and what I'm providing my body, I love it. And a healthy salad is about as good as it gets as far as nutrition goes. Um, and then when I make one in the way that I just love, um, yeah, that would be my favorite thing. Excellent. And how about dessert-wise? Oh, man. Dessert, <laughs> my favorite dessert. 
It was like asking your favorite kid, man. I mean, you know, I love them all. Um, my favorite dessert. Yeah. This is where my, yeah, I'm too honest. I should just answer the question and not try to, okay. um, let's see. Um, uh, apple pie. Okay. Sweet, sweet potato pie. Yeah. Fair enough. Sounds great. I know you do a lot of things with tiger nut flour. I bought it, but I haven't used it yet. I've seen Yeah, that. you know, and, and again, that was just me responding to people on my page and people saying, hey, I really like to have that, but I can't have nuts and it's got almond flour. Don't you have another flour? And um, oat flour, coconut flour, they just don't do what almond flour does as far as baking goes. Um, <clears throat> you can combine them with some almond flour and work that way. And, there, you know, there's some dishes you can make with them and I have. Uh, but almond flour is really, really versatile. And I didn't have anything until a follower said, hey, have you heard about tiger nut? And I said, what? I said, I want a nut-free flour. And they go, no, no, tiger nut, it's a tuber, not a nut. So I did my research, did my due diligence. And uh, that's why I started including it though, so that I could offer more nut-free versions for uh, the people who follow me. And they've been really happy with it. And it makes me happy if they're happy, so. I'm gonna have to try it. So the other thing I wanted to mention is a lot of your sauces and dressings are f phenomenal, but they do have a lot of seeds <clears throat> in them. And for people mm -hmm. who are struggling with their weight or don't want to eat a lot of fat or maybe have high cholesterol or type 2 diabetes, have you ever tried substituting half of the nuts and seeds with cannellini beans or steamed cauliflower or even sweet potato to cut the fat? Because I found that when you do that, you almost can't taste the difference. You still have some of the fat in there, but it makes things go a little bit longer. And especially if you add the cannellini beans in a way, you know, that's that's boosting the nutrition. So um, have you ever played with that a little bit? Well, not only have I played with Sharon, but you can watch me play with it tomorrow because in that lasagna, lasagna that I'm doing, the base of the sauce is a little bit of cashews and a bunch of cauliflower. So awesome. yes, right online. And and I did that because, again, people said, hey, I want to try that sauce, but it's always cashews, it's always cashews. I know yeah. you had mentioned sunflower seeds. I took that to heart and I've, I've used some of those as well. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a cheese sauce. It's really hard with the desserts though. When you yeah. start trying to mimic, um, the cheese sauce, well, not the cheese sauces, but when you start trying to mimic the frostings and that kind of thing, you can do black bean frosting and I have that. But when you're trying to do a vanilla type frosting, it's really difficult to I've do got one. beans or anything Japanese, else. Do you really? Japanese what sweet does it potatoes. Use? It uses Japanese sweet potatoes, which are- Oh, the white, white potatoes. potatoes. Yes. And, I've had and them. Uh, dates and vanilla. And I, mean, I use that all the time. I can't remember. I think there's a blog called Feasting on Fruit. And I got it from that blog. But it's really, really good. It tastes And delicious. I was going to try that, but I couldn't find white sweet potatoes. And I was like, uh -huh. yeah, I don't want. So, and it's not, they're not so common. I mean, I see them. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I live in a state that has a lot of it's big sweet potato producer and potato producer. I was going to try that, but I just couldn't find the white sweet potatoes. And then I don't want to put something out there and people get excited and no one can right. find, find it. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? But, um, but I'm on it. I'm on it. And as you'll see tomorrow or whenever, if you ever watch my cooking show tomorrow oh, yeah. in the future, you'll see that cauliflower. Yeah, that, that was the base of oh, what I I'm use for. Oh, so excited sauce. about your show. I'm super excited. So what is the show called? It's called Make Your Own, but it's on my same YouTube channel where I post my shorts. I've got about 100 videos there already. Um, but no long form video. So this is going to be long form, not just 30 seconds like the other ones. These are running right at, I've already done six episodes. I've already recorded and edited six episodes and they're running right around five minutes. Um, but I think they're really well done. Obviously, maybe I'm biased. Um, but um, but yeah, so if you just go to my YouTube channel, Healthy Vegan Eating, and then look under the, the tab for the cooking show, it's, uh, it's called uh, Make Your Own. I cannot wait until five o'clock tomorrow night. I will be tuned in. <laughs> Javon, Please it do. has been such a pleasure to have you tonight. I don't, I didn't see any questions pop up in the chat, but I know everybody was super excited. Um, people were, let's see, people were commenting about how great this was. Um, I would love it if you could find out what that presser is called, because I'm kind of obsessed right now. <laughs> I really want that thing so I can flatten out my mushrooms too. Um, I do use a lot of oyster mushrooms. So if you can find out what that's called and email it to me, I'll email that out. I'm also going to email out your dough ranch dressing and the links to find you. And I hope that you will join us again and maybe 
maybe we can get you to do another cooking demo if you're comfortable. And I will absolutely share this with my friend, Chef AJ, and hopefully you'll get on her show as well. But I'd really love it if everybody here could subscribe and follow you on Instagram and especially on YouTube. I hope you get out there, Javon. I think what you're doing is incredible. I am so inspired by you and your journey and your passion. And I really hope that our paths cross in person sometime soon. So, Absolutely. Same thank here. You so much for being with us tonight. I can't tell you what an honor it is to finally have a chance to talk with you and see you in person. It's been a pleasure. I hope everyone else enjoyed this. Everybody's saying I subscribe. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank you. This was fabulous. New fan and follower. That's what I wanted. And hopefully when I email this out to everybody who subscribed, you'll have a lot more. Well, that would be great. One more thing to that person who was obsessed. Within two minutes of us ending this, I will be texting you at the exact name. And so you can okay. get it to them because I want her to be able to get one. Yeah. Thank you so much. Well, enjoy your delicious salad and your dill dressing. And I hope to see you again soon. I'll be definitely watching tomorrow night and I can't wait to see your show. All right, great. Thank you so much. Thank you Thanks, all. Yvonne. Thanks everybody for being here tonight. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Right now.